What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. Today, we're looking at the best 2D platforming games on the Nintendo Switch, but the Switch is packed with so many amazing games in the genre, many of which are special to me personally, that I couldn't just do a top 10. In fact, I couldn't even do a top 20. So strap in, because right now, we're going to count down the top 25 2D platformers on the Nintendo Switch. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing, but for now, let's get into it. Splasher took me by complete surprise. While the gameplay is inspired by Super Meat Boy, it introduces a clever core mechanic in the form of a paint gun. You can coat the world with different colors, and each color lets you do something different. Want to bounce off the floor? Spray it in yellow. Want to cling to the walls? Soak them in red. Plus, Splasher keeps introducing new hazards and death traps so things get trickier the further you get. The fast-paced sprinting will get your adrenaline going, and with a set of fun collectibles, this is one of the most underrated indies on Switch. Limbo is hands down one of the most influential platformers on this list. Its potent visuals and environmental storytelling have been mimicked time and time again. The game takes you through some of the moodiest locations and introduces you to some of the creepiest crawlies in video game history. And it does all this without a single color or line of dialogue. The puzzles and platforming will keep you engaged, but what really kept me hooked was seeing just where this surreal stroll through a charcoal world was going to take me next. If you want a reminder of how tough video games were 20 years ago, welcome to the Mega Man Legacy X Collection. But if you get past the initial punch in the face, it's super addictive and it does offer an easy mode. The collection includes Mega Man X through X4, which all build on the NES games by hiding upgrades throughout each level. And the latter two games let you play as Zero. Discovering which order to beat the bosses adds a ton of replay value, and you'll also find an awesome virtual museum perfect for retro enthusiasts. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is one of the better 2D Mario experiences, which is to say it's very, very good. But in the six years since its initial release, it's been outclassed, at least in terms of sheer creativity, by many other games on this list. That said, the themed levels are still fun to explore and the mechanics are nearly perfect. Plus, the inclusion of the more difficult Super Luigi U means you get over 160 stages. And if you're looking to soften the challenge of the main game, you now have the option to play through as Toadette. But let's not forget where this game truly shines, it's multiplayer, which is a total hoot. If you want a light-hearted, pirate-themed platformer that also takes some influence from the Zelda games, check out Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. It's the highest rated of the two Shantae games on Switch, and I have a hunch that's because it follows a more open-world approach to exploration, and it ditches the series' tedious, if charming, animal animations. Now new abilities are tied to items you already have equipped, so you no longer have to stop your running and jumping to activate an animation and transform into an animal when you want to access a new area or solve a tricky puzzle. Also, Shantae's trademark wit is on full display. In Iconoclasts, you play a young mechanic who follows her heart in the face of an oppressive government. It's a surprisingly dark story given the bright and colorful backdrop, but what struck me more than the narrative were the game's puzzles. Most require the use of your trusty wrench, but some were really clever and genuinely tough. There's little hand-holding, and as you upgrade your abilities, you have to figure out for yourself how to use them to manipulate your environment. On the downside, the narrative, while textured with mature themes, did feel convoluted at times, and the combat never really hooked me. Yoku's Island Express combines pinball and platforming, which sounds cool, but does it actually work? Not only does it work, it's awesome. 
The world is so thoughtfully built that getting from point A to point B often takes just a few well-timed flips of your paddles. To me, that's a mind-boggling achievement in level design. That said, backtracking can get tedious, and if you like combat, you should know that this is more of a relaxed, exploration-focused adventure. There are enemies and a few bosses, but the joy of Yoku is in shooting around the map, solving pinball-based puzzles, and discovering all sorts of secrets. The story is also pretty charming. For fans of fast-paced, brutally hard platformers like Celeste and Splasher, you can thank Super Meat Boy for their very existence. With nothing more than a dash and a jump, this game keeps things simple, but that's for the best because the levels would be near impossible with a more complex control scheme. You'll die countless times, but the quick respawns keep you close enough to your point of death that trying again is always tempting. If you haven't played Super Meat Boy and you want to experience one of the most influential and challenging platformers of the last 10 years, you should jump right in. As a follow-up to a remake of a relatively obscure, decades-old game called Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap, Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom is one of those games that makes you wonder, why does this even exist? Well, it exists because the game is just plain awesome. Like in the Shantae games, you transform into different animals, each endowed with their own abilities that let you access new areas and solve some of the game's clever puzzles. And they are clever. Additionally, there are a ton of items and upgrades to collect, and there's a nice upgrade system that gives the game even more depth and some RPG flair. Owlboy is yet another game in the Metroidvania mold, but instead of gaining new abilities by acquiring gadgets and gizmos, you recruit friends, each of whom has a distinct weapon that can help you advance. Owlboy is also unique because you can fly. While other games might wait until the end of your quest to endow your character with such a powerful ability, here you have it from the get-go. The game's various areas have you solving puzzles, defeating bosses, and enjoying some great action sequences, but it's the game's emotionally charged presentation that helps Owlboy truly soar. For example, just take a listen to some of the music. If you ever wanted to run along a roller coaster rather than ride one, Sonic Mania Plus has your name written all over it. Featuring zones from the original cartridges as well as entirely new levels, it does a great job of balancing the new with the nostalgic. And as you'd expect, Sonic's incredible sense of speed is on full display. Just don't forget to stop and smell the robots. There are a ton of branching paths to explore and bonus levels to discover. You also get five playable characters and an encore mode that remixes each zone for replayability. What if you mixed Metroid with more Metroid and a side of the Matrix? You might get Axiom Verge. While other games on this list might offer subtle nods to Metroid, Axiom Verge is an all-out homage to Nintendo's interplanetary epic. But that's okay because the world is realized with such care and the gameplay is so finely tuned that it's hard not to appreciate. As you explore the pulsing and technologically infused landscapes, you discover some truly inventive weapons and gadgets that are a joy to experiment with. And you'll encounter some of the coolest and most satisfying bosses you could possibly ask for. In Guacamelee 2, it's on you to save the Mexiverse as a luchador who can transform into a chicken and travel between supernatural realms. If that doesn't grab you, know that the game is also mucho bueno. If you played the original, you know Guacamelee is yet another Metroidvania. But with its distinct brand of humor, responsive controls, and surprisingly deep combat, it's undoubtedly one of the best. Additions to the sequel include new abilities, a greater emphasis on playing as a chicken, and more complex puzzles that require getting creative about how you swap between realms. 
You can even play with up to four players. It's hard to talk about the Messenger without completely spoiling it. What I can say is that it combines two gameplay styles within the platforming genre like no other game before it. And it does so in a way that's so self-aware and hilarious, it's easy to forgive the game's shortcomings such as inconsistent pacing and slow backtracking. Additionally, the flawless jumping mechanics, the charm of each character, and the reverence the Messenger shows for two of gaming's most beloved franchises make it a must-play. And that goes double for video game historians or anyone interested in what's possible through creative storytelling. If you like your platformers broken up into bite-sized, themed levels, each offering a unique and fun adventure, then Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is a must-play. Sure, the controls are a little floaty, but fully exploring each stage, collecting the letters, and finding every last puzzle piece is the ideal task for the platforming completionist. The 2.5D graphics are beautiful, the music is amazing, and the level of challenge, while high, felt just right. Sure, there's an easier mode thanks to the addition of Funky Kong, but I got way more out of this game playing through using the original cast of Donkey, Diddy, Dixie, and Cranky. Rogue Legacy was the game that helped me understand all the fuss about the roguelite genre. Your first runs through will be devastating, but what makes the game so hard to put down is that each run becomes more manageable thanks to a fantastic progression system. The gold you collect and the blueprints you find allow you to permanently upgrade your character. After a solid run, you'll immediately want to see how much farther you can get thanks to your new stats and abilities. And then there are the random abilities you get on each attempt. Some are helpful, some make things tougher, and some are flat out hilarious. But all you really need to know is that Rogue Legacy is addictive to an unhealthy degree. When it comes to sheer creativity in level design, Rayman Legends puts most other games to absolute shame. It seems like each stage adds a new idea or mechanic that makes things more interesting. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, you run into a level that turns the entire platforming genre on its head. The rhythm and kaleidoscope levels in particular are unlike anything I've ever experienced. But make no mistake, this is a traditional side-scroller through and through, with incredible gameplay from one brilliantly designed level to the next. Gris, quite literally, drops you into a hand-drawn world filled with flowering spills of watercolor and mysterious chalky ruins. The visuals are stunning and their emotional impact is made even more potent thanks to a soundtrack that ranks among the very best. There isn't much to Gris's gameplay, you just run around and solve simple puzzles, but the way the game consistently introduces inventive mechanics keeps things entertaining, especially in the late game. And the way the story unfolds is absolutely breathtaking. Few games have brought me to tears and Gris is now on that list. If you feel like getting swept away by a living, breathing, and moving work of art, play Gris immediately. Mark of the Ninja is so fun and rewarding, it makes you wonder, why haven't we gotten more ninja games? Similar to other stealth games like Hitman or Dishonored, it encourages you to tackle levels however you want with a collection of moves and gadgets that let you approach challenges from multiple angles. You can go on a quiet yet murderous rampage, or slip by more peacefully. You can even use the shadows to strike fear into your enemies. If stealth is your thing, put on your face mask and grab your smoke bombs, because it's time to get sneaky.
For those who haven't played Inside, it's a creepy and macabre puzzle platformer that features arguably the best environmental storytelling ever seen in a video game. It's amazing how simultaneously terrifying, mysterious, and intriguing things become without a single line of dialogue. Gameplay-wise, the puzzles are nearly perfect. They won't stump you for very long, yet they all felt satisfying, and the story, well, there are no words. By the time you get to the end, it's clear that this game doesn't care who you are or what you think. The best you can do is check your expectations at the door and strap in for a ride you won't forget. Dead Cells is a super challenging rogue light, which means that when you die, you lose just about all your progress. Thankfully, you can craft new items and find permanent new abilities throughout the world that unlock new areas and paths that will help on future playthroughs. But the real key to success is understanding the layered upgrade system. The satisfaction you get from building up that rare weapon and crushing enemies that once felt unbeatable is like a drug. And with combat and jumping mechanics that rival the best 2D platformers of all time, Dead Cells is a wonderful drug. SteamWorld Dig 2 combines exploration and character progression in a totally unique way. Using your trusty pickaxe, you literally dig through every square inch of the gorgeous world beneath your feet. In lesser games, this would be mundane, but here it's incredibly addictive. Each layer of sediment is rich in minerals and gems that you can spend on items and upgrades. This makes for a gameplay loop of dig, loot, and upgrade that's straight up intoxicating. Not only that, chipping away at the world forces you to think differently about exploring areas, solving puzzles, fighting enemies, and my favorite, finding secrets. Do you love getting your teeth kicked in? Perfect. Hollow Knight is one of the most challenging Metroidvanias of all time, tantalizing players to power through its punishing combat with a sense of exploration and progression that's nearly impossible to resist. You gain new abilities by defeating bosses and collecting Geo, which is used to purchase items and upgrades. But if you die, and you will die, you risk losing all of your Geo. Yes, it's a bit like Dark Souls, but Hollow Knight is way more than a Souls clone. The world feels genuinely alive, the characters are awesome, and the way you can customize your loadout with new abilities is super rewarding. Plus, at just 15 bucks and with well over 30 hours of content, it's an outright steal. I know I'm about the 10,000th YouTuber to tell you how great Shovel Knight is, but seriously, Treasure Trove is one of the best values in all of gaming. For 25 bucks, you get Shovel Knight, plus every expansion, including Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, and the upcoming King of Cards. Even if you lack nostalgia for the games that inspired Shovel Knight, games like Mega Man, DuckTales, and Castlevania for the NES, the awesome bosses, smart level design, quirky writing, and satisfying RPG elements will keep you smiling even when your thumbs are bleeding. Some of you might scoff, but Celeste was my favorite game of 2018, beating out AAA experiences like Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War. While the platforming is incredible, it was actually the story and how it intertwined with the gameplay that left such a lasting impression. Unlike other tough games where my will to finish is often tied to my pride as a gamer, my motivation to complete Celeste was fueled by my fear of failing the main character. Madeline is one of the most endearing and relatable protagonists I've ever controlled in a video game, and she's only made of a few pixels. This game is a genuinely emotional experience, and it's made even better thanks to precise controls, an addictive gameplay loop, and don't even get me started on those damn strawberries. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And if this is the type of stuff you like to watch, check out my other videos where I count down the top 10 3D action adventures for Switch and the top 10 RPGs for Switch. And if you never want to miss any of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. Until soon, we'll see you next time.